Beautiful humans, welcome back to the I Like Birds podcast. I'm your host, Zach Rippey, and this podcast is dedicated to the non-believers, the confused believers, and the true believers, because I, at one time or another, was all three. So I'm here to help you get a better understanding of who Jesus is and what he's all about. I'd love to grow in our faith together. You learn as I learn. I like the Bible, and I like words, so therefore, I like birds. Let's start the show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the I Like Birds podcast. I really appreciate you guys being here today. On the last episode, man, we talked about the church, right? Which, man, it was a bit hesitant to post that one because, man, the truth is I can legit see myself working on staff at a church within the next few years because, like, that's kind of where my heart is. I know that's how you uh, connect with people on a bigger level. I know that's how you, you know, you kind of, uh, you give the word of God to people, but also, I'm here to be honest, man, and if I feel something and I feel good about letting y'all in on the truth of what I feel, then that's what I'm going to do, because the reason it took me so long to find the truth of, like, what the Word said and, like, who Jesus was is because of all the deception that goes on in the Christianity in America, right? And that's a scary thing to say out loud, and it's an even scarier thing to actually process, which I've really been just reflecting. I've had a lot of time, guys. I've just been at home. I've been reading and studying and just really just communicating with other believers and just I've been in this place of just being able to really just think about things and not to say that everything in the Christianity system in America is flawed though because I would be completely naive to say it's just and I get it it's just people trying to figure it out but sometimes the enemy gets in the middle of that though you know when you have money you have you have attention you have uh mouths to feed, you have bills to pay, you have expectations to meet. What is the church down the street doing? What are we doing? Is the church down the street being more successful than we are? How do we be like them? How do we beat them? It, 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 we're living in a capitalistic society, right? So I understand. And I think you do too, because everybody's human, right? And I also think that like the Catholic church and their priests have really done so much damage to the mentality of Americans when it comes to pursuing their faith. And I'm not saying I'm Catholic or anything like that, but just because Catholic and Christianity kind of believe similar things, not, not all things. And, you know, like they have things, they, they basically hear things at church and then they go home, right? They don't really read. I don't know. I don't really know too much, but, uh, from my understanding, it seems that the priests have really done a lot of damage on the mentality of Americans. And I get it. I get it. But the second you bring up Jesus, it's like, man, it's like these people in America, their minds go to the shady things that people in power have done, not what Jesus has done, which is like so heartbreaking for me, man. And it's so interesting because it really reminds me of the people in biblical times who went around acting like they were religious leaders and they gloated about their righteousness amongst people when in reality, They were scumbags, hypocrites, as the Bible say. And I think we see some of that in America today, which is kind of what kind of turns people off from the church, turns people off from Jesus, turns people off from Christianity and feeling how I used to, Zach Rippey, how Zach Rippey used to feel about Christianity and how many of you may have felt at one time that the church is corrupt, right? And not all of them at all. Like I love my church. I love my previous church. I've seen a couple good ones, you know, and not not all of them. But still, let's talk about those that are corrupt, right? And I understand how a bad church can really turn people away from Jesus faster than the devil can, right? Seriously, like a bad church can turn people away from Jesus. And that's a problem in our culture. It's also something I want to fix one day. Because I'm pursuing this because I want people to really understand who Jesus is and not who they try to make us believe he is, right? So many like religious groups hold on to the Old Testament teachings and they don't even acknowledge the New Testament. Like when they're telling somebody that they broke a rule or they're sinning, a lot of times that's from the Old Testament. And I love the New Testament. I really do. I love it so much because it's the new way to live. And God says that, and so does Jesus, and so does all the gospels of others in the word of God. The New Testament is the way. Therefore, everything that's in the Old Testament seems to just be 
setting up people for the new way of life. You know, God, God gave empathy for the old ways in the old days, and he sent Jesus to change the way we are and the way we perceive God and we, we kind of perceive salvation, right? And if you read the Old Testament and you never read the new one, you may think to yourself, yo, God is kind of harsh. I got to do all this just to stay on his good side. It's a real, it's a real turnoff. And I think that a lot of people that uh, may feel a type of way about religion or, or Christianity, it's because they're so used to people uh, living in the Old Testament kind of era, you know? And man, it's just, the New Testament is so dope, right? You, If you've read it, you know what I'm talking about. And granted, I've read very little in the Old Testament, so take what I'm saying with a little bit of opinion rather than 100% fact. And one day, I'll have read the entire Bible a half dozen times, all right? And then I got you. But right now, hey, I'm exploring my faith. I'm growing in my faith, all right? New Testament, I'm going I'm to get good there. And then I'm going to go to Old Testament, take a little peruse, let you know what I feel about that, and then... Majority of the time, life is about the New Testament, right? And I'm really just like, right now I'm like learning and I'm reflecting on what I read. So yeah, the New Testament is so dope, right? It's so great. It's legit a way of life that allows you to realize what Jesus did for us, dude. And how he wants us, us, you, me, them, us, everybody. He wants us to live. It's the entire way of life, right? And he, like, you you made mistakes, right? You sin, you lived a terrible life, and guess what, baby? Jesus was sent here to live, teach, and die on a cross for those mistakes, right? And I want everyone listening right now to realize all the messed up things you did in your past is okay. He knows we're only human. Human sins. We were born into sin, dude. Human sin, we were born into sin. And Jesus loves your mess, dude. Jesus loves it because he knows like there's a chance for redemption, dog. There's a chance to repent for those sins. There's a chance to be like, yo, I messed up and I don't want to do that anymore. And it's like also the order we get, it's like we should kind of want that for our lives anyway, with or without Jesus. It's like I made mistakes in my life. Why would I want to repeat those things? Why would I want to live in that same mentality, right? It just seems like the way of Jesus is kind of like growth, It's kind of like your frontal lobe kind of developing. You're being an adult. You're being a man. You're being a woman, right? You're not being a girl anymore. You're not posting those pictures on Instagram for attention or clout. Like, no, you're just trying to be a good person. Raise your family, you know? Like, I think we all kind of want a family. And I think that Jesus teaches us how to love our family and live with our family and and just really raise children, right? So Jesus loves your mess. And man, sometimes I just want to like curse on here to get a point across because it's not your mess, dude. It's your BS. Like Jesus loves your BS. And as long as you love him and you seek forgiveness and you try to be better, he's got you. Okay. And this is something, this is something in our culture that is big over the last few years. And it's called woke. Have you ever heard that guys? Are you woke? It means basically from my interpretation, it means I didn't like Google this. I, I'm just talking to you guys right it means are you paying attention to what's going on in the world that's what being woke is right and I love this because I see it as being vigilant of what's going on but when I think of of are you woke I also think of you and your life on a daily and weekly basis are you doing things to improve your life are you conscious you know are you you mentally conscious are you reading are you communicating with your significant other are you serving people are you loving strangers like, are you loving strangers? I think that's big, dude. So, because we're so, our culture is weird, man. We legit, and I don't know if other cultures are like this, so I can't really speak on that aspect. But I feel like we as people are so hesitant to talk to strangers. You know, it's we'll talk to the waiter, but like briefly, we'll talk to the cashier briefly. But dude, like sometimes I'd be having full conversations with strangers. Like seriously, I just like to like get in it. You know, like. I don't know you, you don't know me, but like, let's find something we can talk about and let's get deep, dude. And I think that's what Jesus wants. He wants us to connect with people. And dude, I used to wait tables, right? And for like seven years, okay? So <laughs> it's it's still pretty fresh in my brain. And I kind of miss, I, I, I basically had to, because of coronavirus, I, and I was also quitting because I was about to pursue, pursue comedy full time and I was paying the bills, but 
that's the old life. All right. Uh, and I miss serving people, man. I really do. And I don't miss like serving them hand and foot. No, but the place I worked at was very casual. I brought them water. They filled out an order card. I put it in the computer. They got their food from a food runner and they got their drinks from a drink runner. My job was legit to mingle. All right. My job was to like, just make them feel comfortable, let them know what's going on and just basically chop it up. Right. And I miss kind of going above and beyond for people. I really do, man. I miss talking to strangers, showing them who I am. I miss connecting with them and brightening their day with a good meal and a good convo. And I was that waiter, dude. Like, I would chop it up with you regardless. Like, if you're having a bad day, I'm going to figure out why you're having a bad day. And then we're going to have a good day. We're going to have a good two hours together, all right? All right, one hour because I'm trying to turn and burn. You know what I mean? But we'll become friends, dude. And you'll end up leaving me a 20 spot on the table. Cash. Cause we hit it off <laughs> and we'll have a great time. And dude, I didn't really love my job, but I did my best to love people. And I one day know I'll do that again in some capacity. And I can't wait to just keep showing like people who Jesus is because I'm trying to like live through that. You know what I mean? And it's, it's, it's fun man. it's good. And it's, it's the way it's not because I'm telling you, if I don't live through Jesus, I'm going to be bitter dog. I'm going to be angry. I'm going to be sulky. I'm going to be like, Oh, why poor me. I have to be a waiter. You know, it's like, if I'm living through Jesus, it's, it's not about me. It's about people. It's about relationship. It's about doing what's right. And also, even if I'm a waiter and I'm 27, guess what, dude? I feel, I still feel like I'm doing more, more in my life than if I were to just, you know, have your, whatever job you got that you think is great. You know, it's like, I feel great about my job because I'm provided for my family and I'm also connecting with people and I'm just building something within myself. And so many times we get locked in a label and I'm going off the cuff right now, but that's okay because it's like we get locked in a label like, what do you do for work? And that's like the most important thing. But it's like, that's not what it's about, dude. Who are you? Who are you without that label? Who are you without that title? Oh, you're an accountant? That's great. What do you, how do you treat people? What do you do in your extracurricular activity time? Like it's high school, extracurricular activities. But you get what I'm saying? Like, what do you do in your free time? Are you a good dude? Are you reading? Or are you, you, you in, are you on your phone all day? You know, are you chasing something that's greater than what your label is? I don't know. Something to think about. Do you even know who Jesus is with your label? Or does your label distract you from Jesus? Ooh, that was good. God, that was good. Hey, think about that though. Like, hey, because like so many people that have a good job think that that they made it. You know, it's like, yeah, you made it on a financial standpoint, but did you make it as a person? Did you make it as a human being? Do people like you? Like for me, I've even I haven't even been really on the walk with Jesus, but it feels good to know that I have love and support and encouragement from people in my life that I've touched. And at the end of the day, it's like my label doesn't matter. My Instagram bio of what I do for life doesn't matter. What matters is how I make people feel, what I talk to them about, what we connect with. Like, I feel good just connecting with people that I'm not even really friends with, right? It's like, I'm not gonna, we're not gonna hang out, but when I talk to you, we're having good vibes, dude. We're having good talks, we're having good energies. I like that. And that's because of Jesus, dude. It's not because of me. It's because of like the way Jesus is, wants us to live, right? I don't know, man. I went off on a little tangent there, but that's just, that's just what happens on the I Like Birds podcast, right? I'm a little hyped up right now, dude. I did have a glass of wine, so <laughs> forgive me. But it uh, feels good. It feels good to be uh, out and about, right? On the pod. But uh, speaking of who Jesus is, dude, and I asked you guys this question on the last episode at the end. So if you listen to the end of episode five, or no, episode six, good looks. Because we asked a question of, uh, I think the question, I don't know the exact wording, but basically like when you think of Jesus, who do you th- like, what do you think of? Like what's the image that pops into your head when you think of Jesus? And it's a, it's a weird question, right? Because there's no really right answer. And I struggled with this and I still do because I grew up seeing images of Jesus with his long locks, perfect white robe, and an even more perfect white skin complexion. Which now when I think about it, doesn't that sound too good to be true? Doesn't that sound like American Jesus? And you're telling me Jesus was white with perfect straight hair and some squeaky clean sandals. And we all know the image I'm talking about. We all see it because we've grown up with it exposed to us. 
And you probably thought of it too, which is totally fine because that's just kind of the image that's been in our brains since we've been young. And it's because American churches and American people didn't try to tell you who Jesus was and what he did. They tried to sell you Jesus. Isn't that crazy? They tried to sell you Jesus. They tried to sell you something to get you in those pews, in the, in the, in the, in the chairs. They tried to sell you an image to influence the way you celebrate Easter and Christmas. They tried to make you comfortable with believing in Jesus. And it's crazy because the Bible does not say anything about Jesus' height, weight, skin color, hair color, or even eye color. Because those things are not important to understanding who Jesus is. The closest the Bible comes to describing what Jesus looked like is a non-detailed sketch of what Jesus was not like in Isaiah 53 verse 2. It says in Isaiah 53 verse 2, He had no form or majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. Essentially, in Isaiah, it's basically saying that Jesus was just ordinary looking, right? Like everybody else in that in that kind of season of life, in that kind of time period of life. And according to the Bible, Jesus was a Jew, right? A Hebrew, Israeli. Jesus lived in the Middle East. What do you guys think of the Middle East? What does America make you think of the American East? Oh, does, does 9-11 ring a bell, right? So therefore, let's make Jesus white. Right. I don't know how y'all feel, but I feel weird about that. I feel weird thinking that. I saw this thing uh, a while back that said, uh, if Jesus sat next to you on a plane, you'd be scared. Oh, <laughs> memes are real sometimes. Memes are great because uh, they kind of speak truth. They speak truth in a comedy sense, but also that's a reflection of us, dude. Like, seriously, the media has made us dislike Middle East, you know, and I get it, but also look into it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to get all weird on y'all like building seven. Just it's a little weird. Check it out. Uh, And as a result, back to what we're talking about, as a result, he very likely would have had a light to medium brown skin, brown eyes, and even dark brown to black hair. Middle Eastern. And people associate Jesus as their skin color. And I get it, man. It's like black people think Jesus is black. White people think Jesus is white, et cetera, et cetera. And is it wrong to do this? I don't think so. Not necessarily. But as long as we do not allow our preferred image of Jesus to become an idol, right? There's nothing in the Bible that speaks against imaging Jesus looking a certain way. But Jesus is the savior of all nations, right? It says that in Matthew, it says it in Galatians. No matter a person's skin color, race, ethnicity, or nationality, he or she can experience forgiveness of sin and reconciliation with God through the crucified and risen Christ, okay? The love of Jesus transcends skin color. It means it doesn't have any impact, all right? It's a, it's a heart thing, not a, a body thing, right? Having no physical description of Jesus, people naturally imagine the Son of God to be like themselves, which is totally fine if that's how you need to portray how to live a good life. If you need to see Jesus as as yourself, then that's fine, and that's okay, because that's okay, and that's why the Bible doesn't really describe what Jesus looks like, because it's not important. It's a way of life. It's not really a a, a, a side, right? In, in America, it's so divisive. It's like pick a side, liberal, Democrat, or excuse me, uh, Democrat, Republican, White, black, like, why do we have to pick a side, Lakers, Celtics? <laughs> uh, sorry, I had to throw that in there. And I think it's why, I think there was no description of Jesus in the Bible for how he looked. And, it, and it's really special, because it makes you realize that race isn't a factor. Because Jesus is about souls, not about skins. Why don't y'all quote that? Quote me on that. Gosh, that's so good. Jesus is about souls, not about skins. Dude, so... We should not be dogmatic in our preferred image of Jesus. The fact that the Bible nowhere gives a physical description should serve as a caution against arrogance and presumption on the subject. What Jesus looked like does not really matter. His physical appearance has absolutely nothing to do with his being the savior of the world. Isn't that crazy? As much as we see the the divisiveness in America and the the team choosing isn't it crazy that when you follow jesus it doesn't even matter how he looked and how a bible that has 
hundreds of thousands of words never took the time to tell you that, how he looked, because it's not important. Because if you're black, I want you to believe that Jesus is black if that helps you believe in Jesus. Like, because Jesus isn't just a, 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 he's not us, you know, he's perfect. He's for everybody. He's for all nations, you know, he's for Africa, he's for America, he's for North America, he's for Australia, he's, I don't really know all the continents, he's for Asia, (laughs) he's for Europe. And from my experience, my whole life, it's been the the long locks, the white robe, the white skin, which now as an adult who is actively reading the Bible and doing this podcast, Jesus isn't an image. He's a way of life. He's who I want to be. He's what I aspire to be. And he can be any color he wants, and he still loves me regardless. He still loves you regardless. He could be any color, and I still love him. Maybe he was black, and I'd actually love that because, dude, I've been looking up to black people my entire life because I grew up in that culture in Fort Lauderdale, NBA, hip hop, and now Jesus, what? That would be crazy. And I'm being silly, but man, try your best when you think about Jesus to don't think of the, some image that American churches created, right? And it's almost like even, it's like a hologram too. It's not even just like a white dude with locks and a robe. It's like this dude is like shining and glowing and I get it, like, I think that we should uh, glorify Jesus, but I also don't think it should be this this weird thing that they, they try to sell us. Do you agree with that? I don't know. Uh, and I think, I just think of Jesus as more than an image. I really do. I think of Jesus as an idea. An idea of love. An idea of goodness and perfection. And he was a man, but he's also just a way of life. So, therefore... Since he's not here anymore, he's so prevalent in our lives, but it's the way to to live. And it's so crazy to me that people hated a guy who went around healing people, who helped people, who loved people. Whoa, right? Without skin color, without that even being a factor, they they hated a guy who for who he was because he was just so holy and he was just so great that people were threatened by that. They felt they felt they felt weak amongst themselves. They felt that it wasn't possible. And people, if you're listening and you follow Jesus, eventually you're going to face persecution yourself because Jesus talks about if you pursue him, people are going to, you know, they're going to weed you out of their life, man. If they don't believe the same thing you believe, they're going to weed you out of your life. Okay. So if you're listening and you real and you, and you believe in Jesus and you start being adamant about your, your beliefs and you start being vocal and you start bringing Jesus into your life more, you're going to lose people. But that's okay because you're going to gain so much more, dude. You're going to gain more people that believe what you believe. You're going to ble- you're gonna reach people that haven't believed, but you help them believe. You're going to get blessings. You're going to get treasures in heaven, dude. There's so much more to that than just losing a couple people that aren't on the team. We talked about this a little bit before, but that's okay because Jesus even tells you what's to come. If you read the word, you know what's to come. How dope is that? You know what's going to happen in your life when you read that. You know how to live your life when you read that. And one of my favorite things about believing and following Jesus is the fact that I'm actually, even if I'm losing people, I'm never alone. Okay? Because Jesus is aware of my situations. In Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41, it lets us know that Jesus is with us in life storms. All right? Which means basically in the trials and tribulations. Right? And it says, Jesus is aware of your situation. So although Jesus, being human, needed physical sleep for his body, he was still fully aware of his surroundings. Through the storm that came about when he was on his boat ride with his disciples, the storm did not wake him. The cry of one of his disciples did, and he responded immediately and powerfully. And Psalm 121 verse 3 says, He would not let you stumble. The one who watches over you would not slumber. Which is like so cool because then it's like, Hey, if you're going through something, he's not going to let anything too bad happen to you. If anything happens, guess what? It's going to be a lesson. You're going to move on. You're going to learn from it, and you're going to grow as Jesus wants you to grow. Okay? So that's the most dope part because then it's like anything that you have in life, you're going to have somebody on your side to help you handle it. All right? Why wouldn't you want that? Number two says, Jesus will answer your call for help. The Lord will do the same for you 
in the midst of your trials. Sometimes he just lets us reach the point of desperation so we will recognize that he is our only hope. He wants us to remember that he is on board with us. So even if you feel like, let's say you're in a relationship problem and you and your significant other are just really struggling with something, you guys can't get on the same page and you're at a desperate end, you can't figure it out, you guys tried counseling, you guys tried talking to one another, you tried getting somebody else involved, you've tried doing nice gestures and nothing seems to be working, call out to him to help you in your marriage or your relationship and I promise you and he promises you, once you reach out to him, he will help. He will find a way to mend those that that problem that you're having. Okay, so I think that's so dope and it's so important for them. When and it seems to me that man, when when in my previous experiences with with who I was as a man, if I were ever going through something, I would kind of not really go to him first. I would go to humans first. I would figure out the human. I'd be like, oh, I can figure this out. But it's like, hey, let me just ask God for this this thing. Let me ask him to help me with this thing I'm struggling with and. Every time I do, he always comes through, man. He just came through for me uh, a few days ago, and it's been so dope, and I'm so grateful. And it makes me just so hyped to just keep doing the podcast, keep reading, keep keep getting in it, man, because it's only just attracting more and more blessings, all right? And, and same for your life as well, guys. Number three, you can make it through. Every one of us is going to face hardship, but only the child of God has the promise that God's presence is with him or her in the midst of the storm. As Jesus didn't leave his disciples, so God would not leave you stranded in the middle of your problem. Although he didn't promise smooth sailing, he did promise safe passage. Paul reminds us, my favorite in the book, Paul reminds us that I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Jesus Christ returns. Dude. I love Paul. If I had to say I was uh, aspiring to be one person in the Bible, it would be Paul. Because number one, he preaches amazingly. And number two, he writes so good. And I love writing. And I love just uh, informing people on things. He killed people and he killed Christians. But uh, God was like, yo, what are you doing? And basically changed his entire life around. And I think that we as people, you know, things aren't as tribal and uh as strict and serious as things were back then but i also think that we have a big responsibility to turn our lives around for him and i'm going really off the cuff right now which is okay but i think that i think that we have a responsibility to do better and i think that we need to be striving for greatness you know lebron talks about that a lot and i mean he's on a huge other platform than I am, which is totally fine. And he chases greatness. And I think we should chase greatness, not even just in our sport, but something in ourselves. I think that we should always try to keep just doing the things that make us better. And I love it. I love it because then when you're on a long car ride and you're thinking about your life, you're going to be proud of yourself. You're going to realize your 27th year of life is going to be better than your 26th year of life. And then when you turn 30, you're not going to be bummy and, and feel bad about it. You're going to be happy because it's another chance of like just being better as a person. And I think that Jesus really helps you get there. And I really appreciate you guys listening. And this has been a fun episode, man, because it just feel, feels really like loosey-goosey, probably because I had a glass of wine. But I've been loving... I've been loving you guys. I've been loving the podcast, man. Thank you so much for listening. And uh, I can't wait to keep keep doing this with you guys. I'm learning so much. And we're going to have, I have big plans for the future of this podcast. So please stick around. Keep, please keep coming back. Please keep checking out the new episodes. And it just means the world to me, man. So thank you so much. I just want to always show you guys my love because this has been everything to me these last few weeks. And it, I, I'm over the moon. As you can see on social media, I'm promoting it a lot just because I'm just so hype about it. And I care about it so much and I want you guys to care about it. So thank you so much. And a hey, leave a review on the, the podcast app and, uh, uh, say some nice things if you guys enjoyed it or just, you know, just do a little review cause it helps bump it up to, uh, people that are looking for new podcasts and stuff like that. So I'm doing, I might be doing a giveaway soon as well. Like maybe, uh, some gift cards or something to help, uh, boost up the reviews and subscriptions just to get people 
a little bit more excited about the pod and just keep uh, Jesus in their lives on a, on a weekly basis. Uh, I love you guys. Thank you so much for listening. And this is the I Like Birds podcast. God is good. Jesus is dope. Take care.